Canomax USA is proud to present the next generation of our research-grade multi-channel anemometers, AnemoMaster models 1580 and 1590. Today we'll go over how to get started with these powerful instruments. Depending on your model of choice, you'll receive a unique set of essential accessories in the respective base package. The 1580 package includes the main unit, PC data processing software, AC adapter, and USB cable. Model 1580 optional accessories include analog unit, model 1592-00, connecting clip, also known as unit fixing clip, a dividing terminal block for the analog unit, and your selection of probes and probe connection cables. The 1590 base package includes the main unit, data processing software, 60 watt AC adapter used for up to three connected units, USB cable, and touchscreen stylus. 1590 optional accessories include hub unit, model 1591-00, analog unit, model 1592-00, connecting clip or the unit fixing clip, a dividing terminal block for the analog unit, your selection of probes and probe connection cables, a 160 watt AC adapter required when connecting four or more units, and a DC power cable that is required when using DC power supplies. These multi-channel anemometer models are compatible with 15 different probes. Each one has its own application where it's best suited. So, in case you're still deciding which one you'll be picking for your order, or if you're just looking for further insight into your selected probes, here's a basic breakdown of each model. Model 0972-00 and 0973-00 are unidirectional probes that measure air velocity within a range of 0.01 to 50.0 meters per second. They're accurate to the larger of plus minus 2% or plus minus 0.02 meters per second of the displayed value processed every second and operate at temperatures from 0 to 100 degrees Celsius. What separates them from one another is their form factor. 0972-00 has a flat profile for easy mounting using a fixture and 0973-00 has a cylindrical form with a diameter of 9 millimeters for holding the probe by hand or inserting the probe through a round hole. Model 0975-00 is an omnidirectional probe that measures air velocity within a range of 0.01 to 25.0 meters per second. It's accurate to the larger of plus minus 2% or plus minus 0.02 meters per second of the displayed value processed every three seconds and operates at temperatures from zero to 100 degrees Celsius. Its needle type form factor is great for measuring turbulent airflow in a circular plane surrounding the sensor and a very good response time to changes in temperature is required. Model 0975-09 and 0975-10 are omnidirectional probes that measure air velocity within a range of 0.01 to 50.0 meters per second. They're accurate to the larger of plus minus 2% or plus minus 0.02 meters per second of the displayed value processed every three seconds and operate at temperatures from zero to 100 degrees Celsius. 0975-09 is identical in form factor to model 0975-00, but as mentioned, measures in a wider range. So, it can be used in similar applications that operate with higher air velocity. Model 0975-10, on the other hand, also shares the needle type tip, but it's over four times the length of the other needle type models, making it ideal for those occasions when a longer reach is needed. Model 0976-03, 04, and 07 are heat resistant omnidirectional probes that measure air velocity within a range of 0.01 to 30.0 meters per second. They're accurate to the larger of plus minus 3% or plus minus 0.02 meters per second of the displayed value processed every three seconds and operate at temperatures from 0 to 120 degrees Celsius. 0976-03 is a mini straight type probe 30 millimeters in length ideal for doing measurements at moderately high temperatures. 0976-04 is also a miniature sized probe, but features an articulated neck for those hard to reach areas. 0976-07 is a new micro probe that's just six millimeters tall, perfect for microelectronics and PCB cooling efficiency testing. Model 0976-13, 14, and 17 are almost identical to 0976-03-04, 
and dash 07, but are not as heat resistant, operating at temperatures from 0 to 100 degrees Celsius, and feature improved measurement accuracy. Model 0976-05 is another micro-sized, heat resistant, and omnidirectional probe that measures air velocity and temperature within a range of 0.01 to 30.0 meters per second. It's accurate to the larger of plus minus 3% or plus minus 0.02 meters per second of the displayed value processed every three seconds and measures air velocity and temperatures from zero to 120 degrees Celsius with an accuracy of plus minus 0.5%. Model 0976-15 is similar to 0976-05, but measures air velocity more efficiently and measures temperature within a range of zero to 100 degrees Celsius instead. Model 0975-21 is another omnidirectional needle type probe, but this one is capable of measuring temperature along with air velocity. Air velocity is measured within 0.01 to 25.0 meters per second to the larger of plus minus 2% or plus minus 0.02 meters per second of the displayed value every three seconds. Temperature can be measured from 0 to 100 degrees Celsius with an accuracy of plus minus 0.5%. And finally, we have the most advanced omnidirectional model 0975-31. This probe is capable of measuring air velocity, temperature, and humidity. Air velocity can be measured from 0.01 to 25.0 meters per second to the larger of plus minus 2% or plus minus 0.02 meters per second of the displayed value every three seconds. Temperature can be measured from 0 to 60 degrees Celsius with an accuracy of plus minus 0.5%. Humidity can be measured from 5 to 95% relative humidity with an accuracy of plus minus 3% for measurements between 5 and 80% and plus minus 5% for measurements between 80 and 90%. This probe is excellent for complete environmental studies. Each of these probes are also compatible with the Canamax 6333 airflow transducer, so keep this in mind if you're ever looking to purchase one for yourself. For overviewing the parts and functions of your Canamax multi-channel Anima Master, we'll be using the model 1590 since it operates similarly to the 1580. The major difference between the two being the 1590's dedicated interface unit and its ability to scale up and work with a greater number of hub and analog units, increasing the number of probe and analog channels you can work with. On the top of the 1590's main unit, there are a number of useful terminals to work with. The LAN terminal is used for communicating with the network PC via Ethernet using Modbus protocol. The USB Type-B terminal is used for direct interfacing with a PC, and the USB Type-A terminal is used for plugging in USB memory sticks for data transfer. Next to that is a 2.5mm jack for external triggering the device. The last two ports are a unit-to-unit -unit communication terminal and a DC power supply terminal. On the front, you have the touchscreen along with a slot in the top right holding a stylus. On the right side, you have the power switch and port for the unit fixing clip. On the back, you'll find the connection socket used for interfacing with the other units, like the hub unit. 1590 hub units and the 1580 main unit have 12 probe connection terminals and a DC power supply terminal. They're nearly identical, but the 1590 hub unit includes unit-to-unit -unit communication terminals on top. In the case of the 1580, its ability to communicate with its analog unit is done via the connection socket on its back. The analog units are the same for both models and cross-compatible. On the top of the unit, there are 12 analog output terminals, a unit-to-unit -unit communication terminal, and DC power supply terminal. And on the right side of the unit, you have your power switch. Prior to powering on the units, it's important to ensure your system configuration is correct, otherwise malfunctions and or damage can occur. No matter the number of units being used, the unit should be connected in the order of main unit to hub units, and hub units to analog units for the 1590. For the 1580, it's main unit to analog unit. There are three ways you can link 1590 units together. The first is by using the connectors on each unit. These insertion ports are where you use the optional unit clips. To disconnect the unit block, you'll find a hand well on the bottom of the units that provide a grip for prying them apart. Alternatively, there are indents on the left side of the units where the 1590 stylus or your finger can be used to pry them apart. The second and third methods are only possible on the 1590 model. Linking can be achieved by using the optionally available standard cable. This configuration doesn't require that the units be a connected unit block, allowing the units to be positioned freely from one another if needed. And the third method utilizes both linking methods. If you have multiple connected unit blocks situated around your test environment, 
you can link those using the standard cable. When linking units via standard cables, it's important that you connect them in an order similar to what was mentioned before. In a configuration that uses a single main unit, hub unit, and analog unit, connect the analog unit's up terminal to the down terminal of the hub unit. Then connect the up terminal of the hub unit to the down terminal of the main unit. If you're working with multiple connected unit blocks, always connect the blocks via identical unit types, hub to hub and or analog to analog. Each block connects in a linear fashion, so make sure the last block you're connecting to is your main unit block. After you've figured out how you want to configure your units and connect them, you can start connecting power supplies. In a block configuration, you only have to connect a single power supply to any of the units. If multiple units are supplied power simultaneously, electrical collisions will occur, potentially damaging the units. In a freely positioned or multi-block configuration, you'll need to connect multiple power supplies to each individual block or singular unit. When powering different sized 1590 blocks, take note of which AC adapter you're using. The 90 watt power supply is capable of powering a three unit block containing one main unit, one hub unit, and one analog unit. And the 160 watt AC adapter is capable of powering a five unit block containing one main unit, two hub units, and two analog units. After power sources have been connected, keep the power off for the time being. The next step is to begin connecting probes. Each probe comes with a converter box that houses its calibration data and provides a convenient way to swap out different lengths of cable as needed. Once a probe connection cable has been attached, you can connect to any of the probe terminals on the hub unit. When using an analog unit for measurement data conversion, you'll need to use the dividing block. When connecting the dividing terminal block, make sure the block is inserted as far in as it can go. The pin layout of each channel has one positive pin above a negative pin. To begin wiring, push the white bar using a driver or other tool to lock it in place. The dividing block's ports can receive American wire gauges of 16 to 26 and require a 9mm length of stripped wire for a proper connection. For the rest of the video, we'll go through the menus of the 1590 in depth. On the measure settings screen, there are a number of ways to customize your measurement. Interval or sampling interval is where you set how long it takes for your sampling to update. You can choose a duration between 0.1 and 6,553.5 seconds. The box next to that is for selecting the unit of your sampling interval. You can choose between 1 second, 10 seconds, 100 seconds, and 1,000 seconds. The interval of your sampling will be calculated and shown in the box to the right. The next row is similar but pertains to how many samples you'd like to take during the measurement. Choose a number of samples between 1 and 65,535 and a unit of either 1 count, 10 counts, 100 counts, or 1,000 counts. You'll see your determined count to the right. The first box in the time row is where you select your total measurement time. You can choose between 0.1 and 429,483,622.5 seconds. The box next to that is for selecting the unit of time for this measurement. Options include seconds, minutes, time, or date. Your options for units of air velocity include meters per second and feet per minute. Temperature unit options are Celsius and Fahrenheit. Checking the moving average box will set the moving average mode to on, and leaving it unchecked will keep it off. If turned on, to the right of it is a box for selecting the number of times the moving average is calculated during the measurement. And below that is a box displaying available memory for saving measurement data. When you're done and want to save these settings, press the save button in the bottom right. If you want to load a previously saved measure setup, just press the load button and select your saved settings. The measure screen is where you can start, stop, and observe measurements. The navigator in the top left is for selecting the hub unit you want to observe. Below that are your channel buttons where you can toggle whether or not their measured values are displayed. Just below that are the external trigger toggle and the average button. The average button is used to toggle the display of each average of velocity, temperature, and humidity in the measured value display. And the last button below them is the start and stop measurement button. Tapping the graph tab opens the graph screen where you have similar navigation and toggle buttons as before. However, now you have a button to stop or start the graph drawing, toggles for which measured item you'd like drawn on the graph, and a range setting button that toggles the graph range between a manually set range or an automatic one. When you switch the range to manual, two rows become available where you can set the range for velocity and temperature. Under the file tab, you'll find a directory of all previously saved measured data. When you're not in the middle of a measurement, you can rename files, copy data to USB memory, 
transfer data, and delete data. Use the stylus to select any individual file, or use the Select All button to highlight everything. If you notice that files from a recent measuring session haven't been displayed yet, press the Refresh button to reload the directory. With the files you have selected, choose from any of the four action buttons. Keep in mind that the Move button transfers files to connected memory, but then deletes the original file on the main unit. The Copy button, however, transfers files to connected memory while keeping the original file on the main unit. Under System Settings, you can set the time and date, turn on a sleep function for the LCD backlight and set its timer, your device language, audio feedback for when navigating the device menus, and the PC communication method. At the bottom of the screen, you have a button to perform touch calibration, and next to that is a toggle for displaying the input keyboard. The version button displays the current firmware version of your unit. When you're done configuring your system settings, you can press the Save Setting button. The Connect screen shows the current status of your connected probes. You can check on your different hub units using the navigator in the top left, or you can tap on any of the probes to display their measuring items, product number, serial number, or latest calibration date. And lastly, the Analog Settings screen is where you can configure what your connected analog units are doing. In the top left is another navigator but this time for selecting which analog unit you're currently configuring. Below that is where you toggle which analog unit channels are outputting data and what item. The arrows on the left are used for scrolling through your channels. To the right of your analog output channels are boxes for choosing a hub unit, one of its channels, and a measured item from that channel for input. When you've decided how you want to set up your analog output settings, all you have to do is press the Save Setting button. That's everything there is to cover. If you have any other questions about testing with the Canomax 1590 or 1580 multi-channel anemometers, feel free to visit our website at canomax-usa.com, call toll-free at 800-247-8887, or email us at sales at canomax-usa.com. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on the latest advancements on the ultimate measurements.